Uh, statistically redefining uh, healthcare and innovation really a big topic. Uh, I would like to uh, first say that this will be a crowdsourced speech, meaning that whatever uh, I'm saying is determined by your phone. Uh, if you can uh, bring up your phone and scan the QR code, it's not the contact tracing QR code, uh, it's a QR code for the uh, online forum uh, that can uh, enable you to uh, post any questions to me and uh, uh, also like each other's questions for I believe that the government and people in the healthcare uh, community is now transitioning from uh, working for the people uh, to working with the people and working with the people means that the people set the agenda of what you would like to hear me talk about. For the next 30 minutes or so, uh, my speech will entirely be determined by the likes uh, on this um, board, uh, I see people are already giving likes, uh, and uh, the top um, question, for example, currently, uh, during the process you help government to fight the pandemic, what new experience does the task bring to you, and any new lessons learned you would like to share uh, will be my first topic, and then the next uh, most voted will be my second topic, third topic, and so on, till the time runs out. Uh, is that okay with everyone? And if you can't scan the QR code for some reason, uh, you can also manually enter slido.com and enter ask HIF. Um, the capitalization doesn't matter, uh, and then enter the same uh, forum. Is that okay? Okay, awesome. So, so let's get started. Okay. Um, in the past couple of years, uh, we've seen that Taiwan countered the pandemic with no lockdown, and also countered the associated infodemic with no takedown. And these two is very important because that means that the people set the agenda, set the counter coronavirus measures, and the people also understood that public health, science clarification is something that everyone is responsible of. For example, uh, I mentioned the contact tracing QR code, the SMS, 1922SMS QR code. That QR code is not my idea. It's not the idea of anyone in the government. Rather, it's from a community called Gov0 or G0V. This community started in 2012, systematically look at all the digital service that our government provides, which all ends in something that GOV, the TW, right, is the government domain, uh, and to make better, or at least more fun, alternatives by changing an O to a zero. So if you don't like any particular digital service in Taiwan from the government, you do not have to go to the street for protesting or demonstration. Rather, the demonstration is in the form of a demo. That is to say, to simply build something that works better. It's the same for the mask rationing maps, for the self-service vaccine reservation system, uh, also for the contact tracing system. So come this May, uh, when a lot of people are worried, that our previous paper-based contact tracing registration system in public venues are going to cause its own uh, infection risk, right? Because people share the same pen, uh, or because people gather around in filling the forms of entering the venues and so on. So the leading architects of the private sector companies gather together in the Gov Zero social sector online community to learn from the world um, what kind of contact tracing QR code system has been tried before, what are their drawbacks, and so on. And we finally settled on something that's an open standard across nations, that's to say the QR code, and also an open standard across all telecommunication carriers, that is um, the SMS system. Because if we invent new data collection endpoints that did not exist before the pandemic, people will naturally, reasonably, be wary of it, and also uh, afraid of its privacy and cybersecurity implications. Which is why we did not invent any new data collection points. We simply reuse what's already there before the pandemic in a way that's very easy to explain. Moreover, people did not like the data being aggregated from the person or the place they trust, like their telecom company, to some third party that they do not trust or at least do not know as well as their telecom company, which is why we said from the very beginning that of the quarter billion or so the SMS sent since this May, 
all of it is stored in the telecom carrier itself and not shared even with the Ministry of Health and Welfare. It's only when a local outbreak happens, when the contact tracer needs this information, do they start to piece together the SMS from the five major telecoms. To date, there's around uh, 11 million out of the quarter billion or so that's been pulled by the local contact tracers in a multi-party way. And the second thing, in addition to this crowdsource innovation, is the nature of the multi-party design. People understood that the 15-digit code is entirely random. That is to say, the telecoms do not have a mean to know which venue do those 15 digits correspond to when you scan a contact tracing QR code. And just like piecing together a puzzle, that puzzle belongs to another QR code maker. Actually, there are three QR code makers, uh, the trade van, um, CHT, and the Taipei City government. Uh, they manufacture their own QR code. So um, individual privacy cannot be compromised if only one actor out of this multi-party, like eight or nine party network, uh, suffers a security breach. None of them suffer a security breach, by the way. But were they suffer a security breach, it would not compromise the privacy of the entire contact tracing system. So that's the second thing, is a secure multi-party design. And the third thing is that it's entirely voluntary. So we're not forcing anyone to use the SMS, uh, certainly not the QR code scanner. Just uh, as I said that if you can't scan the QR code, there's a fallback, right? So people using feature phones, my grandma, for example, uh, can manually enter the 15-digit QR code and SMS and text to already a trusted toll-free number, 1922, representing the uh, Center for Disease Control, right? So um, that's a fallback. And for people who don't even have a phone with them, who don't have anyone accompany them, well, they can still revert back to use the paper form. And, um, well, they know that they will not be crowded, the pen will not be shared by much, uh, because most people use the QR code. And then they also innovated, like uh, using a stamp uh, without uh, the need for external ink, uh, with their name on it and so on, so you can just stamp your will into a venue which is arguably faster than a QR code. So our innovations do not preclude future innovations. Anyone who wants to make a new QR code scanner, and many people did, the Taiwan social distancing application uh, is my preferred QR code scanner. But if you trust, say, Trend Micro more, you can use the Trend Micro QR code scanner. There's many QR code scanners uh, by people because we base on open standard that's crowdsourced and do not uh, sacrifice any trust because we endorse a secure multi-party design. And I believe these principles, this is like a microcosm anecdote, these are the principles that will enable us to uh, build more trustworthy data coalitions in the future based on the successful experience of the NIH Express app and the 192 SMS contact tracing system. So the next question is in Mandarin, so should I speak uh, Mandarin? I guess yes. Uh, 下一个问题是说, 在您看来, 医疗产业应用新兴科技之前那第二个呢就是当我们这个创新真的出现的时候我们不是被强迫把这个资料放在我们本来比较不信任的而是资料可以一直是放在我们比较信任的那个部分也就是是这个应用程式去配合资料的流向 code to data 而不是让资料去配合应用程式的流向 不是bring data to code 这是刚才讲的第二件事情这种呢叫做assistive 
越少，那就会越威权嘛。这个不是什么价值判断，这是一个很简单的一个说明啊。那我们在设计 AI 系统的时候，当然本来就可以去挑这两个之一。那我们要怎么样子去挑呢？这个其实也很简单。我常常说 assistive， 大家可能有做过辅助式的辅具嘛，辅助式的科技。像我现在戴这个眼镜，就是一个辅助式的科技嘛。没有它的话，我就有点就是 differently able 的，对不对？那但是这个眼镜它有两个特色。第一个，它有 value alignment， 就是说，它是以我的最佳利益为基础的。我想要看得更清楚，它帮我看得更清楚，它不是取代我，它是帮助我。而且，我现在带着看各位，不会突然冒出二十秒钟的广告，然后我得等它就是倒数二十秒才能够关掉，因为那样子的话，就是 align to somebody else， 就不是 align to me。那第二个也是很重要的，就是 accountability， 就是当它坏掉的时候，它很容易给得出交代。什么意思呢？就是如果呃，我今天戴上，发现它螺丝松了、不稳了等等，我自己上 YouTube 看个教学，我就可以把它修好。或者是我到巷口我相信的眼镜店，它也不用付个什么两百万的授权费，它也可以很容易的把它修好。也就是说。It empowers end users. 就是对 end user 来讲，就像我刚才讲，我们的 contact tracing 是基于所有人都可以验证，而且所有人都了解的简讯、QR code 这两个开放式的标准的科技上面，一个以标准的螺丝孔所做的眼镜，那任何人也都可以理解，也都可以维修。所以，如果能够做到 alignment and accountability， 那你就可以向所有人证明说，你的这个人工智慧是 assistive， 是往辅助式的角度去走。那样子的话，大家对你。你的信任才可以随着一次一次的给出交代 ，being accountable 而水涨船高哦。所以我觉得人工智智慧所谓的要落地，那它真的要落的就是每一个使用者的心理，每个使用者要了解说，哎，我能够理解这个科技，能够改变这个科技，能够把这个 code to data， 意思就是说这个城市嘛，我如果觉得有可以更好的地方，我也可以改造它，也可以让它再进一步变得更好。这个时候它就不是你的 user， 它就是你的。Partner 或者你的 collaborator， 所以同样的就是，越是从 for the people 变成 with the people 的人工智慧，那在至少台湾这边，就是越能够落地，越有民主的价值的人工智慧。希望要回答这个问题。Uh, a people would like to know where is Taiwan going in digital health in five years' time. What do you think are the biggest obstacles, and what do you see are some potential solutions? Um, as I mentioned, we're now in a paradigm shift. Between the more Web 2.0 bringing data to code to Web 3.0 bringing code to data,、uh, and it's not a easy thing to think、uh, in a way that is、uh, people-centric. Mostly because it has been too easy for us to、um, aggregate data in a single place, and it's rather difficult to share data in a secure, multi-party fashion. Until well, last year or so, when there is many mathematical breakthroughs、uh, in secure multi-party computation, in homomorphic encryption, in which you can send the data in an encrypted form to somebody else to do the computation for you without revealing the raw data. But the computation after sending back, you can decrypt it and just reveal the computed result. So it it decouples data controllership versus data. Processing, so that's another important breakthrough.、Um, our National Center for High Speed Computation、uh, just a couple of weeks ago ran a conference、uh, with the support of some of you here、uh, to explore the cutting edge、uh, federated learning, secure multi-party computation, homomorphic encryption, and things like that. That will truly ensure this bring code to data approach is not just、uh, feasible in an academic sense, which has it has been、uh, proven as. With some rigor、uh, in the past decade or so, but rather also viable in the economic sense, in the sense that it's actually affordable and there's industrial standards and best practices that's already being formed around this new paradigm. So I think in five years' time,、uh, people will think it's it's normal. To understand the algorithm, the code that affects their personal data sharing, and people will also、uh, understand that if they participate in the data coalition, just like participating in a local community building cooperative, credit union, and many other、um, analog world data coalitions,、uh, people will understand that they can continue to exercise control 
and also exercise voting rights and so on uh, after they participated in the collaborative um, of the data. And we already see a lot of these prototypes nowadays uh, starting to spring up thanks to the National Health Insurance Database and the prevalence of the NHI Express app, which I believe more than one quarter of the Taiwanese population are already using it actively. I think almost a third now, which is a kind of a critical mass for people to voluntarily contribute their data. We've seen, for example, last year when we announced that we're going to dedicate masks for international humanitarian aid. Well, more than 7 million masks are dedicated by the individuals using the NHI Express app, choosing instead of collecting their rationed mask quotas uh, to dedicate it to international humanitarian community. So that's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's not just acting for the people, but rather with the people. Because we know, and half of them, like the NFT, choose to kind of embed their name in the open data on the list of a uh, war of gratitude of people who dedicate their masks uh, to international community, whereas half of them uh, choose to remain anonymous. But one way or another, this is obviously already a working data coalition, uh, although it's a smaller scale, but I believe we're now expanding it to many other areas in healthcare and also uh, preventative medicine. Um, the next question, what does it take for Taiwan to have open sourced health database for insight and for analysis on top of the NHI database, which is for academic usage mainly? Uh, from what I understand, if you bring code to data, then that is already the case. Um, the director mentioned the chest x-rays, which is a good example. Uh, the chest x-ray algorithm, which is the result of an international collaboration sourcing mainly from international chest ray uh, scanning data publicly available, uh, it has trained a model that runs within the NIH database. That is to say, I believe uh, in the Taipei and New Taipei municipalities, uh, if you scan for a chest race and you upload to the NIH database um, as is the custom uh, workflow, uh, they will automatically be subject to this kind of rapid testing by chest x-ray AI model that runs within the NIH administration. And this uh, pertains to what I just talked about on trusting the NIH, right, the virtual private network, that your data is the raw data, the scan. It's not going anywhere else. It's still within the NIH, which is tasked to protect and secure it. But the data um, is combined with code that is crowdsourced, that is contributed from the international health community, and uh, entrust the NIH administration to run it within their data center. And of course, if multiple data centers uh, in Taiwan or across the world choose to run this, then we can collaboratively train this AI model by sharing not the data, but rather the insight, right? uh, the uh, positives and negatives, the, um, the non-identifying information using differential privacy and many other mathematical constructs that would enable us to share what we have learned instead of the raw data on top of which how we learned it because that would be sensitive private information. So I believe this sort of federated learning uh, is already viable in Taiwan. It's actually part of our presidential hackathon uh, in which uh, every year our president uh, choose five teams uh, to win the trophy. And the trophy is a shape of Taiwan with a micro projector underneath. And if you turn on the projector, it projects the president giving you a trophy, so it's very meta, it describes itself. Uh, but this uh, projection means that we're committed, uh, five teams every year, to bring uh, whatever they have innovated in the past three months or so uh, to national level rollout. This is how we roll out the telemedicine as well as many other uh, important regulatory changes uh, with the help of Ministry of Health and Welfare and Ministry of Interior uh, that enable the budgets, the personnel, and the regulatory changes because the presidential hackathon process itself is a result of a slider like uh, what we call quadratic voting and participation from the social sector, private sector and the public sector to ensure its long-term viability. So yeah, feel free to, to continue to, to track the X-ray scan case uh, with the NIH, and I believe it shows uh, the future. Without compromising anyone's privacy, everyone can nevertheless learn together. And I understand the next speakers uh, in this forum will be talking about more details of this federated learning paradigm. 
呃，有五位朋友问说，你认为目前的科技跟创新哦，能够怎么样子协助台湾的医院跟厂商，跟新南向国家合作建立超越单纯的展示跟教学训练之外哦，更长期跟全人的医疗服务哦，这非常好的一个问题。其实刚才讲到的那个 bring。呃、uh, ，Go to data。我们之前在呃，就是之前总统杯黑客松，他是在社会创新实验中心，在我的办公室啊，仁爱路三段九十九号那边，呃，有很多的新创的团队，就是在试这样子的做法。我记得有一个新创团队，呃，一个应该高雄出来新创团队，他们在呃台湾的偏乡试着用呃 AI 来诊断肺结核，然后这个肺结核的例子在台湾当然肺结核盛行率并不是非常特别高，但是有些有些 pocket， 那所以他就像我刚才讲的那个胸腔 X-ray 的一个例子，就是他用全世界呃这方面的演算法跟资料的贡献，他在台湾这边做一个试点，但是呢到最后我们是把他带到伊索比亚。啊，在 social enterprise、social world forum 上面，呃，去跟呃非洲的很多朋友说，哎 ，WHO 这个事实上我们呃在二零三零年有去发展目标，其中一个就是把像肺结核这样子的传染病啊、呃，就是消消弭嘛。那但是他们那边每一个 scan 需要花的钱是比较多的。那用台湾这边的技术的话，那可以不到呃一美元，就大概一美元左右、哦、就可以完成一个 scan。那这个对他们来讲是差非常多。虽然对我们来讲，就是因为我们健保蛮 robust。好像还好，但是我们在呃非洲的情况就就不是这样子。那从他们的角度来看，他们并不是很 comfortable 说他们所有的呃 raw data， 所有的 source material 什么，全部都透过所谓的云端传到台湾来进行运算，所有资料控制权都在台湾手上，不是这样。但是因为我们一开始在训练的时候就是一个 portable model， 所以他们在那边可以用两阶段训练的方式，就是我们这边训练好之后，我们把模型给他之后，在他们那边他们再去把。他们那个阶段需要改变模型的这些参数，像刚刚讲用类似分散式学习的方法加上去，所以他们那边的资料跟台湾不同的部分，哎，是 keep 在他们的手上的。那这个时候他们是非常能够接受，事实上，呃，是觉得这个实在是太好了，因为他们不用吸收一开始最大的那个训练的成本，他们只要用一个比较小的，实际上一个零头的训练成本，就可以完成，就是对他们来讲很重要的肺结核早期筛检这样子的事情。不过当然，就是非洲并不是新南向国。但是我相信这样子的例子也可以去套用在包含新南向国家在内的任何的其他的 jurisdiction 里面，因为他们每个都有自己的关于资料、关于治安等等的法规。那 bring code to data 就没有这个问题，但是如果 bring data to code 的话，就很容易碰到我们跨国的资料传输的这方面的挑战。希望有回答这个问题。嗯、um, ，Five people would like to know is privacy still an issue、uh, of health data research in Taiwan? Was a、uh, motivational issue, right? It, it's not a problem to be solved. Rather, it's a design constraint.、Uh, it's called privacy by default or privacy by design.、Um, as I mentioned during our secure multi-party 192 to SMS-based contact tracing, the only reason why people would voluntarily use this newfangled system is because. The individual pieces and components are well understood, and people already understand that te their telecom carriers have their telephone number anyway, right? So it's just like、uh, attaching post-it notes via the SMS system. Now,、uh, a couple weeks、uh, after rolling out this system,、uh, and with more than two million individual venues、uh, voluntarily posting those QR codes. Um, th there's some privacy issues, and I'll be、uh, frank and honest about it.、Uh, there was a, a judge,、uh, Zhang Yunsheng, I believe is his name,、uh, that received a search warrant、uh, from a police investigation unit, saying that they would like to access the database that turns those 15-digit random code back to the venue because they are、uh, investigating a international fraud case or something like that. And because through the regular wiretapping mechanism, they receive a copy. A copy of the SMS of that、uh, criminal suspect,、uh, they and they couldn't make sense of it because it's randomized code. So they would like the judge's help in、uh, issuing a search warrant. We've seen this actually happening in pretty much all the countries that rolled out QR-based contact tracing system. In some countries, the health offices actually ask police for data, and in some、uh, jurisdictions, they pass a law that says only for really serious crimes can the.、Uh, 
criminal investigation unit share the data from the uh, public health unit. But in Taiwan, it's rather different because in each and every SMS that you send, if you read Mandarin, if you scan a 1922 QR code, you, you see that there's always a line attached to it that says, This is for uh, counter epidemic use only, right? So this is basically uh, the people's volition, the people's collective um, wish that this remains counter pandemic only, and which is why the CECC, the Central Epidemic Command Center, immediately started a uh, consultation with leading legal scholars and also with the of zero communities, uh, and very quickly we roll out this public interpretation from the Ministry of Justice that says, well, the normal communication is between two people, and posting a post-it note of 15 random digits in your telecom certainly does not communicate with anyone. And this database is rotated every 28 days, and that database for criminal investigation is rotated every six months. So obviously, this is not private communication, and therefore, if the telecom operators do not send a copy of the 1922 SMS to criminal investigation units, it's entirely legal because it should not be wiretapped to begin with. And so instead of like other jurisdictions where they try to kind of balance between sacrificing a little bit of liberty and privacy, enabling a little bit of criminal investigation and so on, we simply said, well, this is for counter-epidemic uh, use only. And that is what won back people's trust on this system because people understand then that uh, if this SMS is for country epidemic use early, well, it means exactly that. And we make all the legal interpretations and so on public available so people understand we will not sacrifice privacy. And imagine if we did not issue that interpretation. Imagine if people continue to worry about kind of sliding into uh, compromise of privacy and so on, then people will obviously stop scanning QR code and go back to paper-based uh, stamping and so on. And once uh, that becomes the new norm, well, the entire QR code uh, SMS contact tracing system fall apart, as it did fall apart in many other jurisdictions. So upholding privacy is the precondition of people participating voluntarily, and uh, trust uh, is uh, not just a abstract quantity, but rather a continuing relationship that we have to continually earn trustworthiness by trusting the people to uh, contribute their data and by upholding their privacy. Uh, to give no trust is to get no trust. So to give trust to the citizens and their QR code scanning applications is to receive trust and trustworthiness into the integrity of the privacy-preserving nature of this uh, one actually to SMS uh, based contact tracing design. Um, Yang Zhonglong would like to know if Taiwan uh, does have the courage and opportunity to design a brand new national health insurance system, say 3.0, how will it be uh, in the future? Uh, that's, I think, a question uh, more suited for the two experts <laughs> in the main table to, to, to answer. Because uh, I'm the digital minister, and, and digital is just an instrument, an assistive technology to whatever public health goals and benefits uh, that the national health insurance panels uh, decide. So for example, I, I did help with the telemedicine system, the QR code based uh, telemedicine, so that instead of the plastic IC card based uh, NIH card, uh, anyone receiving telecare and telemedicine now in Taiwan can use their app, the NHI Express app, and show a QR code to the camera, and then to complete a transaction in the NHI database for diagnosis and so on. And that, of course, necessitates a lot of change in the NHI Express app. But people overwhelmingly in our collaborative meeting and workshop said that it should work exactly the same as how we use a plastic-based IC card. They do not want, for example, mobile payments to be added to the NHI Express app. They do not want, for example, uh, the public service um, usage that's not registered with the NHI Express to start using the NHI Express uh, QR code as a proxy uh, for electronic identification, for example. And so um, the people here in Taiwan have already a very strong norm when it comes to the use of an NHI IC card. That is to say the mutual accountability of the pharmacist or the clinician using their own card to register uh, personal data transactions into interpersonal uh, 
transactions that you can always uh, account for any data mistypings or breaches and so on. And so we need to carry that norm forward if we are to still win people's trust. In 1922SMS case, for example, we built a website, sms.1922.gov.tw, that anyone can enter their phone number and see in the past 28 days which municipalities or cities contact tracers with which number have accessed your SMS record. And this is mutual accountability. And this, of course, we learned from the NHI Express app, where from the Jinkang Chunzhe, from your private health bank, you can see whichever uh, information that your clinician or pharmacist told the NHI. Well, you can also see it and also provide um, corrections if necessary. So uh, whichever 3.0 um, architecture that a new NHI adopts, I believe that this norm around mutual accountability and citizen participation uh, must still be uh, the core.那比较之前总统被黑客送的另外一个团队叫救急救难一战通嘛他们就是在救护车上面直接做了诊断之后透过 不同的院所，甚至是不同的部会啊，因为消防署是内政部嘛，不同的部会都用呃这个fire的这样子的交换的模式，去确保说虽然他们有不同的呃就是data source origin，但是他们在呃就是转换的时候，可以不需要就是恩成以m，就是每一个点都要写往另外一个点的这个交换模式，而是大家都可以往fhir这边去做集中，那集中之后呢，就好像一个data hub，好像一个汇流牌一样，可以确保说每个人都只需要写一次。往Fire的这个adapter那这个是蛮具体的一个做法那很多的细节欢迎继续追踪我们总统被黑客送的这些团队好那下一个问题就是新的体会这个是刚才用英文问过一次我已经分享过了那然后最后一个是说 How Taiwan should do to collect, integrate and meaningful use of big healthcare data and I believe that data is never just personal it's always interpersonal and only through building data coalitions of strong mutual accountability and a freedom to remix at the very edge to empower people closest to the patient, close to the suffering, can we truly build a data collaborative that is shared with all. Thank you very much. Thank you.